It's day three of Week to Wicked. We had a really good day yesterday. We got a lot of the big stuff in the car. The uh, 427 cube LS3 stroker is in. That means we got a motor, we got a suspension, brakes, and uh, the wheels are actually supposed to show up today so we can get the car on the ground for the first time. Anybody that's ever built a project knows that the big stuff goes pretty quick. There's still a lot of little things to do. The clock is ticking. We've still got a lot left on the table. Yeah, we're gonna have to get that radiator in, the transmission in. We're gonna get those all plumbed up. Um, and once we get those wheels on there, we can roll the car forward, get the seats out, get the dash started. We've got gauges and then we've got a whole lot of wiring. There's a lot left to do today and we're gonna get to it. This is Week to Wicked. So, looks like the front sway bar is going in, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This now, is, uh, uh, the size of the sway bar, is it an aggressive bar? Is this a streetable bar? This is an inch and an eighth sway bar, which makes it very streetable, but it's, it's much more firm than the original. Mm -hmm. It's a lot larger than the original bar, so you're going to get a lot more roll resistance. It's going to feel more stable once the body tries to roll over. It'll stop the body from rolling over. Now the bushings that you're using, are they urethane or are they rubber? These are a, a poly plus bushing. It has uh, grease channels actually in the bushing. Okay. So that um, when you grease it, there's a grease zerk in the billet bracket we're about to put on in a moment. That's what I was going to ask you next. So the and bracket itself does the, have a zerk. The, the channels kind of capture the grease. It's almost like a grease seal. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's well lubed up on the inside without making a big mess. And we started by putting a little grease in the bush thing to begin with, so they'd already started off lubricated too. So I can sit here and pump grease. Cool. To begin with. So installation on the rear sway bar is about to begin. Um, it's much different than the front. Danny's going to walk us through it. Um, starting off with the axle mounts. Yeah, these are our billet axle clamps. They're going to wrap around the axle, which is going to be step one. It helps me hold it right side up. These go underneath the brake lines and around the axle. Then there's going to be a secondary bracket going to go into place below it and we're going to go to the front and connect it up there. So in just a moment we'll get this lined up. Okay. Inside? Is it inside? So we're changing a lot of stuff in this car in a very short period of time. A lot of parts coming together and we found our first little problem. The wheels don't clear the control arms, but Danny came up with a really good idea. We're gonna take the ball joint out from underneath the arm, move it to the top. That's gonna to drop the arm a little bit on the camber curve and give us a little bit of wiggle room. All right, the clock's ticking. We've only got a little bit of time left to put this whole car together, get it fired up, get it you know roadworthy. So we're really trying to get this done quickly and make sure the wheels fit and get the project back on schedule. So right up here, this is the section of arm that was rubbing against the wheel, but by moving the ball joint, um, we were able to fix that, and we've got clearance for our new American Legend wheels now. All right, time to install our transmission. Um, DLS is putting out over 600 horsepower, so we are going to be using the 4L80. Fully electronic, computer controlled. Um, it's the right deal for this combination. Check her up. The cool thing about the CPP uh, motor mounts, I know I've covered this before, but you know you can slide the engine front to back, and now that we have the transmission going in, we can fine tune that and get it exactly where we need it. Now that we've got the transmission bolted to the motor, we can come back here, do the motor mount, the cross member, and then come back and bolt up the torque converter to the flex plate. Okay. Hmm. Well, I guess it wouldn't be wicked without blood, right? All right, right now we ran into a little problem. Nothing major, we fix it. The torque converter is in, um, sitting flush with the flex plate, so let's see what we can do. Oh, no, I haven't. 
Because the converter was already in the tranny. I never took it out. I don't know if, if the register was different. Yeah, I don't know if it was different or not. All right, got it. <laughs> so what's cool. this one? Got the right flex plate. So this is the one with the offset to give us that half inch we needed? Yeah. So Perfect. what we kind of learned today is uh, there's two different types of LS flex plates. One of them has an offset, one of them doesn't. Um, usually the ones with the offset come with the trucks. Since this is an LS3 base motor, it had the flat flex plate. Um, what Performance Automatic includes to make it work is this spacer. Works great, it pushes the, the flex plate out to let it mate with the torque converter, but you have to have long enough bolts to bolt it on, which we didn't have on hand. And so they're an M8 bolt. You can't just get them at your hardware store. You've got to specially order them, so. Yeah, really hard to find bolts. So something to know, have that ready. So we jetted off to Guarantee Chevrolet, got the right flex plate. Now we're ready to bolt the foil lady in. All right, with the flex light radiator fan, the fan came pre-mounted from the factory. And this particular unit came with universal 90 degree brackets on there, with the which the team here lined up with the factory bolt holes on the upper part. But on the lower part, they needed to drill holes through the core support to line up with the bracket. So they've gone ahead and done all of that already. Now they're dropping it into place. And they're gonna make use of the slotted T-channels in the radiator core support to slide the, the uh, mounting brackets up and down so they can mount the radiator at exactly the height that they want. We're officially three days into the Week to Wicked Chevelle build. We've got a ton done today. We've got the trans in the car. And uh, Jason, what else did we get done? Um, sway bars are mounted. The torque converter's locked down. Um, drive shafts back in. We've got the radiator, all the plumbing finished up. Uh, hydro stop is all plumbed. Uh, we're moving along. And if you hadn't noticed, the car's on the ground. We got some new wheels on it. Everything is looking great. And we're getting really close to a road trip. So the clock is ticking on this build. We've only got a little bit more time to get everything together, get it fired, and get it ready for the road. So we've got a lot of work to do, and we're going to hit this hard in the morning. <laughs>